just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Everybody, everybody, how are you? Whoa! Wow, I just, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a complete mystical experience right now. And I'm not sure what's going to come out or what this program is even about. Well, some guidelines that I set up for myself. Um, I have a special guest today and I, I think I wanted her here just to have her sitting next to me. This is Suzanne Sullivan, <laughs> and she's a mighty companion, as all the people in this room are my beloveds that are taking care of me right now, and uh, whew, didn't expect this to be happening so soon. <laughs> um, I guess Suzanne and I started this journey over a year ago, and um, the idea we just completed a seven week program, online program called Rethinking Sickness. And I think there's some of my rethinkers in the audience today. Um, it was a powerful program and as I kept telling them, I'm doing it with them. It wasn't like I was giving them anything. I was in the room on the playing field with 14 really courageous people <laughs> that were willing to really look at not just sickness but any concern of bodies and um, whew, I mean I had no idea this was going to happen a, over a year ago yeah yeah it's been a quite a journey actually from the inception of this idea to do this program in this new way uh, have a completely different context, have an online kind of devotional that you spent this time and and really the lead up to it with our relationship because really the Course in Miracles is healing through the power of, and the mirroring of relationships and so from the beginning it started with you and, uh, and myself and to be able to see it come into full fruition was really, really beautiful. And I appreciate being here today because it's always, you know, we're always sharing what is strengthening within ourselves. And that's what uh, Jesus says in the Course is that we have to, to share and give away that which we're strengthening with our, within the mind. And um, so it feels really beautiful to just do whatever happens today. We have no idea. I could just be sitting here in just full glory next to Calico, but it's been such a, a, a deep experience. Um, which it always is when you're working so deeply with these teachings because they're such profound teachings and yeah we were having a few words this morning about the depth of this and yeah and, and if you're not like you were saying if you're not willing to step through the fear in the mind then you literally will just conceptualize the spiritual uh, the spiritual journey it will become another concept which is not what we're about here at all we're really about exposing the fear because it's so deep in, in, and so embedded uh, in the unconscious. And so as you've traveled through this last year, you've, you know, like you've said many, many times, she said, this, this is for me. And so whatever we put our mind energy into, um, it's either taking us deeper into the sleep of the ego and the dreaming, or it's taking us out. And so it gets quite simple in a way when you start to realize that you know you can make your decisions based on that one thing is this is this taking me deeper into the illusion of sleep or is this helping me in my awakening process yeah. and so it was no accident because as most of you know uh, calico has dealt with 
cancer and has used it in a way for the awakening and we'll all use whatever symbols arise for us, right? And it seems like when we start down this path that the stuff starts to come up and, and that's a good thing and that's what we very much encourage is that not to push it away or think there's something wrong. The minute you think that something's wrong that's arising, you're blocking what can be used in such a beautiful and deep way to release it into the light of your own mind, to release it back into the presence of who we are. And even like Calico was just sharing this morning, maybe you can share with them about your dream, like, you know, it was so powerful to, to you, were, you were actually the witness. Right. And it was a teaching, a teaching, teaching night for Calico with the spirit. And maybe you could just share. Yeah, that, that. It, and this is happening more and more to me. Um, my dreams are actually a time where I, I, Holy Spirit is just guiding me through a process of my mind. And last night was profound in um, being here now, um, really being in the moment. And I, it just kept going from snippets of my life. And it's not by chance we have a South African living with us. And it brought up all my African me memories of <laughs> refugee camps and starving children. And, and then there were rapes. And there were all these little snippets. And, <clears throat> the beautiful thing was, Holy Spirit kept saying, in this moment, and this is something we dealt with in Rethinking Sickness, you cannot experience pain if you're truly in the moment. And what I was shown last night, you cannot experience other, anything other than being neutral no matter what is going on. You know, in the middle of a, a rape scene in my mind, I was shown how in this present moment, there's nothing going on. And as soon as I flipped into when will, be, when will it be over, it pulled me into the future. Or why is this happening to me? Pulled me into the past. But in the very moment, and this is, you know, I wanted to share some of my experiences with rethinking sickness. Um, because one of them was really to get, unless I'm seeing myself as a body, and unless I believe, there's just two concepts to this. If I see myself as a body, and if I believe I can either attack or be attacked, that's the only, those are the only two premises that set up sickness. And so we really looked at this very deeply and very experientially in the past seven weeks. It was like a seven week retreat. And <clears throat> during this time, I really didn't share a lot of what was going on for me. I, although I was doing the program with everybody else, um, we had weekly Zoom rooms and there was a lot of homework and a lot of mind experiments that we played with. And um, I shared with everyone on the last day uh, that I would be doing this show to really share some of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes um, that was extremely powerful for me. Um, and I guess I'll just jump right in because, and this is towards the end of uh, the program, I had the opportunity to talk to Greg and Jenny Donner and there was, I had gotten to the point where cancer, the word cancer is just a symbol. It holds no fear for me whatsoever. But what was still affecting me was, I don't feel I have the body I used to, which is definitely not in the moment. It's taking me to back to a previous memory in the past and I'm comparing myself. And so Jenny and I and Greg talked about it. And at some point, <laughs> Jenny said to me, and I could feel stuff lifting as you go through this process. There's an amazing thing that happens when you feel a block coming up. It's like you're going to sneeze, you know, and it's going to come. You just don't know when it's going to happen or how obvious it's going to be. And while I was talking to them and sharing, um, I could feel a block lifting massively. And, and again, this is, you know, A Course in Miracles is a course in mind training. A Course in Miracles is to face the fear and go towards the fear. 
And so as we're talking, I could feel this block coming up and I was just like, oh my God, here it comes. And Jenny said the words, I don't even remember what was said by anyone, but she said at some point, perhaps there's more rage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, at that point, and this is where, you know, the Course is constantly saying there's only one answer, yes. And this is the point at which you have to say yes if you really want to proceed with this. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing you want to do is have rage. I'll speak for myself. The last thing I've ever wanted to do is have rage. And we talked about, you know, <laughs> we talked a lot during this program. I was clearing over here while others were clearing with me. And it's like, I was raised in an angry family. And I remember as a child, I was told, don't be angry, no one will ever like you. And it was like, you know, what was I getting? The mixed messages I were getting was just profound. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm living with a lot of angry people, some of them raging, some of them very sick. Yet I was told, don't be angry, no one will like you. Mm -hmm. So this set up a huge conundrum of, well, then what am I supposed to do? So as I felt this rage surfacing, and one of the beautiful things of being in community, and community is just a symbol, but there's many bodies that are a part of this community that have given me permission to express whatever's on the mind. The only two guidelines within community is no people pleasing, no private thoughts. And um, so as this rage was surfacing, I, I left Greg and Jenny and something happened and I, <laughs> I went in to join with Andy and Anna. And if you, you know them both by being on the shows, they're like, they are the Christ. And they said something to me, and it doesn't even matter what they said, because it had nothing to do with anything. And the rage came out. I, I don't even remember what I said, other than I was staring into these two doe-eyed beloveds. And I was screaming like a sailor, <laughs> and focusing it on them. <laughs> And the whole time my mouth is moving and words are coming out and I'm heating up. My, in my mind, I kept thinking, this has nothing to do with them. This has nothing to do with them. This is your projection. And so I'm staring into these two beautiful, four brown eyes, doe eyes. I kept thinking, they're doe eyes. How can you scream at a doe eye? And I came back and I was clearing with Suzanne at some point and she was saying, yeah, it's kind of like kicking Jesus, baby Jesus. And I just went, that's exactly what it felt like while I was in there. My mind is going, don't, don't kick baby Jesus. Don't kick baby Jesus. And all that was there was just this, un, I mean, it's, it's like the sneeze that's got to be sneezed. And it came out, and I raged and let it out. And mm -hmm. the circumstances of it really don't have, are meaningless. Mm -hmm. But I let it out, and I left there going, I think that may, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I'm not even going to go there. It surfaced. I expressed it. And I haven't been happier ever since. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean... We've been giggling all the time, oftentimes inappropriately. <laughs> well, I think what I think the the depth of what you experienced is is the beauty of coming together for authentic healing. Because without the ability to allow and the safety, the safety is what you felt, uh, and that's what we have here, and that's what you you can pray for in your own experience to have. Uh, mighty companions around you that you can actually start to get in touch with this unconscious guilt because without that and that's what we were talking about this morning without that ability and that safety to to start to lift the cornerstone and allow this deep unconscious guilt this belief in separation because all we've done our whole life is try to manage it to try to control it, it because we don't want to feel the magnitude 
of that belief that we've lost our connection with our source and it's and underneath it is extreme sadness and so to be able to be with mighty companions where you can literally allow it to come up and and you know we have all sorts of support for that online support and expression sessions are out there now and and the really the depth of this is profound um, because it's not really at all about the circumstance like you're saying mm -hmm. It, it was just, it's like there's darkness, let's not label it, let's not judge it. And a lot of times, and I know for myself as I, as I traveled through this, the hardest thing for me was not to judge myself after I had done something like that. It was like the ego wanted to come in instead of letting it free flow back into the presence of who I am. Because then you start to see, just like in the dream last night, you started to see that if you are in presence, it, and this stuff is arising. It's almost like you you start to see that you're witnessing it instead of being it, and it's so uncomfortable sometimes when you're when you're starting to make that seeming uh, awareness more prevalent in your mind. It's like you you feel like you're that anger. You feel like you're that rage. Right. But in actuality, it has absolutely nothing to do with you. So whatever even the circumstances is it starts to dissolve like and th and then there's such a gratitude for just being able to have Express it. have that um, have that opportunity really because what's happening is healing and the ego interprets it as a problem so we have to let go of thinking there's a problem even if the mind keeps saying there's a problem just like <laughs> no there's no problem this is what authentic healing looks like and that's where most people turn and run because it gets quite intense. It can get quite intense. But if you, like you said earlier, if you just go towards that, in the mind even, if it's even if it's just you in your closet in prayer with the Holy Spirit being completely authentic and letting this up and then letting it dissolve and you will feel like you will feel very quickly it transfer into a deeper experience of presence. And so it's not a comfortable thing. And I always say, you know, it's, and to myself as well, just be comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah. for a while. And to be able to authentically journey through this darkness is what the Course is showing us. Most of the Course tells us what we're not, is showing us what we're not, to prepare us for to, what yeah, <laughs> to prepare us and show us each step of the way. And that's what's so beautiful about the Course in Miracles. It leaves no stone unturned. It really does show us the way there will be extreme disorientation so that's helpful mm -hmm. it's helpful to know that that's part of the deal and doubt even doubt on the path he says is it's part of it while the ego while there's perception there's going to be doubt so it's like, oh there's doubt okay jesus told me that doubt is a part of this so i i can accept that in a better way in, a, in an easier way for my mind to be able to drop through this stuff so we just really invite you to take advantage of the the many, many things that we have available. Oh, my God. And, and just, okay, this is an announcement. <laughs> We're going to be doing another Rethinking Sickness program starting June 1st. And I invite, and this is really not necessarily sickness. This is really beyond concern for the body. And in whatever way you know, you're playing it out, you know, watching, managing diets or hating your thighs or, <laughs> or whatever way it comes out. Yeah. You know, if you have a particular person that you're angry with, it's the same way. You're angry at a body, at a mm. symbol mm. in the dream. Mm. And it's like, and that has to have a place. And there's a specific pathway that A Course in Miracles is taking us mm -hmm. through yeah. on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I was reading this, the, I just need to share this because this really, the inner shift, um, it's in reason and perception, the inner shift. Are thoughts then dangerous? To bodies, yes. <laughs> well, that's pretty clear. Um, the constancy of happiness has no exceptions, no change of any kind. Our birthright is to be happy. Mm. That's our purpose. That's our purpose. Mm. I have not lived my life happy. <laughs> it is unshakable as is the love of God for his creation. 
So this function of happiness is, that's, that's what we were created for. Mm. To find our way back to consistent happiness. Mm -hmm. And there's a part in the Course, uh, I, I will quote it wrong because I, <laughs> I don't do well with quotes, but it, it talks about the only thing that can stabilize the mind is a stable purpose. And so once you have that purpose out front, then the mind can go through whatever it needs to go through. But the purpose has to be clear first. And the devotion has to be to that purpose fully. And if it's not, that's fine. It's like you, you, you travel down the pathway and you stabilize as you go. But if that's your heart's desire is to awaken to the truth and to become the dreamer of the dream, which is the happy dream, then that stable purpose is the most important thing because it's the only thing that's stable. The only thing that is stable in this world, as far as concepts go, is the concept of forgiveness. So as we practice that deeply and find more ways to access that through prayer, and the, and the Spirit will, will gently guide you towards whatever step is necessary next to completely wash the mind from these thoughts of fear and suffering, because that's all that's happening. The only thing we're actually giving up is the fearful concept of a separated self. And it's deep and it's profound and it rocks and it rolls, but it's actually the thing that's going to bring us back into happiness. Because we've all lived long enough to know that everything that we've tried really hasn't worked. Maybe it'll work for a minute. Maybe it'll work for two minutes, but it's, it's, it's designed to fail because it's outside of you. It's, it's like looking for something to bring you happiness. And that's never, especially when you decide on the purpose, it's almost like it magnifies. Things will begin to magnify, which is good, because you want to be able to see it. Uncomfortable, yes, but you want to be able to see it. And so, yeah, just from, from experience, it can, be, it can be very rough, but underneath it is where all the good stuff is and, <laughs> and the peace of mind and all the things that we're you know, we're hoping to achieve through all these other means that we've all tried. So that stable purpose is the most important thing to have out front. Consistent joy. You're worthy of consistent joy. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's, what, that's what I got out of this past seven-week rethinking sickness. Mm -hmm. And for me, it really started when we started this journey and putting together the curriculum for it. Because mm -hmm. quite frankly, there is no curriculum for this. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is, we were, we were addressing topics that I have never heard addressed mm -hmm. in A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned from being in this community, because this is a community of committed individuals to an uncompromising truth. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was extended in this program is what I've gotten from being in community. So I kind of see this past seven weeks as everyone got a taste of yeah. community for a seven week period mm -hmm. of time. I think that's the beauty of what's happening now is the spirit is bringing in all this online stuff. And, you know, we started this over a year ago. And I was up in Camas with David as we launched uh, three back-to-back -back online retreats in three different languages. And we got to see the intimacy and the connection that can happen and how simple and how beautiful. That's how abundant it is right now with the Spirit, like making it so easy for us to come together because there's no excuses anymore. It's not like you have to come to live in a community. It's not like you have to come somewhere far away for a retreat. You can actually just join online, and the, and the feeling is really powerful, and it's the same. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I noticed. I was like, wow. I was saying to David, I was like, wow, this is really very beautiful. And in some ways, it's even more deep because people are, you're comfortable in, in your own home, and you're able to just kind of present yourself in whatever way, and then, you know, you're, you're there in the safety and comfort of your own home. And so it can take some of the Im intimidation out of it. So really invite you to take advantage, truly take advantage of what the Spirit's offering because you're surrounded. I mean, you truly are surrounded by support. And, and, it's, and the foundation of the support at Living Miracles is so pure. It's so pure. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I didn't put as many links. So I know Carolina's out there somewhere um, putting in links. 
Hi, Carolina. Um, and it's like the 30-day program is coming up March 1st, and that's a great introduction into this mind training process of how to un start the unwind. And it, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to start with, if you're seeing yourself as sick, don't start that way. In fact, I shared this with, with my rethinkers. You know, I started with traffic. I could handle traffic. I hated traffic, but I could handle traffic. So I started with my mind, okay, you hate traffic. How can you see this differently? How can you work with this concept called traffic and turn it into an ex enjoyable yeah. experience? Yeah, there are no levels of, uh, you know, difficulty. difficulty. And there's also no levels of, of illusion. That's like, yeah, they're all uh, the same. Cancer, traffic, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> there's no difference. And so pick something simple to start with. You know, if I had huge fear of cancer, I couldn't just jump into well, I'm going to love cancer. How the hell do I do that? Yes. It's like that wasn't going to work. So I had to start at a, a much safer level for myself. And that's where these retreats are. And I wanted to, we only have five minutes left. Next weekend, we have another online retreat. And I said this to my rethinkers also, that once you get, you're not a body. And that's what Rethinking Sickness really created for people, that introduction to maybe... I'm not seeing this correctly. And once you move into that arena and really un clear that up, you then move into being under Christ control. And this is what the next re weekend is about. So I invite people to join us because this is where we're going. It's like, can you live in a Christ mind? Yes, Jesus was here showing us a long time ago, this is totally doable, or else he would have walked to the cross going, God damn Romans, what in the hell are they thinking about? You know, he didn't, that wasn't the experience of what was going on. So it's like, I just invite you to take on a lot of these, uh, you know, living miracles. We have a lot here and we're committed to getting more and more out there online for people to, to participate in because it's in the sharing. Mm -hmm. It's in the sharing. It's in the joining. It's in the communication of it. Mm -hmm. So um, next weekend is our online retreat, and Caroline will put that link up, 30-day program. We have MMT, which is a two-year program, and I tell you, I've, mm -hmm. I haven't completely done the, the whole two years, but every module that I look at, I'm profoundly moved by. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, really utilize these programs that we're we're wanting you to join with these Sunday programs beyond the body from our community members that are living this devotion. There's not anyone that's here living in this community that it doesn't have a deep, deep calling and a deep, deep devotion to the truth and to see, seeing everything through love. And, uh, so I just, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if you have any closing words. Um, stay tuned. We're going to have more and more offered. I have no doubt. It just feels like this keeps opening up. And I think I just want to, um, as peace must come to those who choose to heal and not to judge. And that's what we're doing here in community. We're just every step of the way, and it may look pretty crazy at times. Um, I went through it with Andy and Anna, and I just, I love them even deeper than I loved them before as a result of holding the space for me to really let some big fur balls up. So time's up. I just see a sign, time's up. You guys, I love you dearly, all of you. I join in you in the truth and the joy of who we are. So until next week, and I will be back next, or in two weeks. Have a joyous, joyous moment. It was just a tiny bad idea At which the son of God